now that the light-dependent reactions have made enough ATP and NADPH, it's time to put those high-energy products to work. This is video 9.4 on the Calvin Cycle. This video will cover these unit goals. Pause the video and check them out. The overall goal of the Calvin Cycle is to take the energy from the light-dependent reactions and transfer that energy into the bonds of glucose. Essentially, the Calvin cycle sticks together carbon dioxide molecules to make sugar and stores energy in the bonds that are being made by making that sugar. The Calvin cycle has a bunch of redox reactions. Remember in cell respiration how glucose was oxidized and the high energy electrons were stripped away and stolen from glucose? Well, photosynthesis is kind of the opposite. Now, carbon dioxide molecules get charged up when they get reduced and joined together. Each redox step builds up the energy in the molecule until we end up with sugar. And what's the source of all of this energy? The energy comes from ATP and NADPH that was made in the light-dependent reactions. Here's the equation that we'll use for the Calvin cycle. 6 carbon dioxides plus 18 ATPs plus 12 NADPHs react to form one glucose. Where did the reactants come from? Well, ATP and NADPH came from the light-dependent reactions. And only now in photosynthesis does carbon dioxide join the party. This carbon dioxide comes from the atmosphere through the stomata and hangs out in the gaps of spongy mesophyll until needed. The Calvin cycle takes place in chloroplasts and more specifically, the Calvin cycle takes place in the stroma, which is inside of the inner membrane of the chloroplast, but outside of the thylakoids. The Calvin cycle can be overwhelming, so to make the Calvin cycle more manageable, we're going to um, break the Calvin cycle down into three phases. Phase one, carbon fixation. Phase two, phosphorylation and reduction and phase three, regeneration. The first phase of the Calvin cycle is carbon fixation. This is the same carbon fixation that we talked about with nutrient cycling in our ecology unit. The important chemical reaction here is when carbon dioxide is joined to a five carbon molecule called ribulose bisphosphate. And we can call ribulose bisphosphate RUBP for short. This makes a six carbon product when those two are joined together. The enzyme that joins RUBP and carbon dioxide is called Rubisco. The six carbon product of this reaction quickly breaks down into two three carbon pieces. There are a lot of chemical names in here, so it's important to clarify what you should know. First, you should know the name of the five carbon molecule, RUBP. It's not important to know the full name of RUBP. It's also critical to know uh, the name of Rubisco, the enzyme that does this. Finally, be able to describe the process in terms of how carbons are being moved around. Five plus one carbons gives six carbons, but then the six carbon piece is broken into two, three carbon pieces. It's super important not to gloss over Rubisco easily the most abundant enzyme on the planet and arguably the most important enzyme on the planet. We said that enzymes are proteins and enzymes usually have a name that ends in ACE. Rubisco is no different. Rubisco is the shortened name for ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. There's two ACEs there. For, reaction, for the reaction in phase one of the Calvin cycle, the substrates of Rubisco are RUBP and carbon dioxide. And just like most enzymes, Rubisco has its substrate in its name. RUBP is ribulose bisphosphate, and that's the Rubis part of the name. The reaction of adding carbon dioxide to something is called a carboxylation reaction. So Rubisco carboxylates RUBP. Ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase. We'll get into the oxygenase part in our next video. 
Phase two of the Calvin cycle involves using most of the ATP and NADPH from the light-dependent reactions. In other words, we're doing some phosphorylation and we're doing some reducing or redox reactions here. What happens is that the three carbon pieces from phase one are first phosphorylated. Here's ATP coming in. Since there are two of these generated, two ATPs are used to phosphorylate each of them. Next, those phosphorylated pieces right here are reduced by NADPH coming into the mix over here. The end product is a charged up three carbon piece called glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, or G3P for short. G3P is the product that all of these reactions have been leading up to. Two G3P molecules can be stuck together to make one glucose. In this phase, we've used two ATP and two NADPH, one each for each three carbon piece. G3P is a big deal. Another name for G3P is phosphoglyceraldehyde or PGAL. So you can call this product either G3P or PGAL, whichever one uh, you like better. G3P is the key output for photosynthesis. When we think about G3P as making glucose, but G3P can really be the carbon backbone for almost any type of macromolecule. G3P can be used as a starting point for lipids, uh, as a starting point for sugars like glucose, as a starting point for nucleotides, or amino acids that will be used to make proteins. Since we already made our desired product, G3P, it's weird to think there, that there's more to this, but we still need to keep the cycle going. And to keep the Calvin cycle going, RUBP is needed so that RUBP can join more carbon dioxide and carbon fixing phase one. So a lot of the G3P that's made in the Calvin cycle gets shuffled around to regenerate RUBP. As you can see, this phase costs one ATP per turn of the Calvin cycle. The chemical reactions of making RUBP molecules from um, G3P molecules are really complex. And so this diagram simplifies all of those reactions as just a series of arrows. But what you should be able to do is just describe the purpose of this reaction, um, which is regenerating RUBP, rather than worrying about too many of the details. So the purpose of phase three is to regenerate RUBP from G3P. This phase requires one ATP per turn or six ATP per glucose. And here's a sneak peek at all of those complex reactions. I told you it was complicated. So you've got the G3P over here, and it goes through all of these different pathways, and all of those carbons are shuffled around. And at the end, you get RUBP. All right, let's catch our breath here. Um, so it's important to know that NADPH and um, ATP are the high energy inputs from the light dependent reactions. And the next chemical names that are important to know um, are these three here, which are grouped together. Rubisco is the enzyme that catalyzes carbon fixation. And carbon fixation is just the joining together of the five carbon RUBP and the one carbon carbon dioxide. Finally, our desired product of photosynthesis is the three carbon G3P or PGAL molecule. At this point, it's important to think about carbons because carbons are a bit weird here and hard to wrap our brains around. By the end of phase two, we've made two G3Ps, which is what we want. Two G3Ps are used to make one glucose. But here's the deal, to get two G3Ps with one turn of the Calvin cycle, only one carbon dioxide was put in. If all the G3P was taken away, it would be taking six carbons out of the Calvin cycle, but only putting one carbon in. And that would be unsustainable. We'd run out of carbons. Two G3Ps are six carbons. So to take six carbons out to make a glucose, 
six carbon dioxides have to be put in. Therefore, it takes six turns of the Calvin cycle to make one glucose. Well, let's do a little bookkeeping with ATP and NADPH too. Each turn of the Calvin cycle requires three ATPs and two NADPHs. Two ATPs and the NADPHs are used in phase two, and then one more ATP is used during phase three. Now, since it takes six turns to make one glucose, what that means is six times three means 18 ATPs, and six times two NADPHs makes 12 NADPHs total. And that seems really expensive. 18 ATPs to make one glucose? But remember, aerobic respiration gets about 36 ATPs per glucose. So you're still coming out good with 18 ATPs in the positive. Also, the energy that it takes to make this ATP comes from the sun, a resource that's free to plants every day. So looking at the two phases of photosynthesis, the light dependent reactions use water and light to make the high energy products NADPH and ATP with oxygen as a waste product. The NADPH and ATP go immediately as reactants of the Calvin cycle and the Calvin cycle is where carbon dioxide comes in as a reactant. Together, these three things undergo a series of chemical reactions to make glucose, which is just in the form of two G3P molecules. If we combine the reactions of the light-dependent reactions in the Calvin cycle, we get the overall photosynthesis equation. Six carbon dioxides plus six waters plus light react to give glucose, G3P, and oxygen. So let's recap this video. The Calvin cycle phosphorylates and reduces carbon dioxide to make G3P in the stroma of chloroplasts. G3P is the magic molecule that's used to make glucose. The Calvin cycle can be broken up into three phases. The first phase is carbon fixation, where Rubisco fixes carbon dioxide to RUBP. The second phase of the Calvin cycle uses ATP and NADPH to phosphorylate and reduce carbon pieces that then become G3P at the end of phase two. In the third phase of the Calvin cycle, most of this G3P is used to regenerate RUBP, but some of that G3P can be taken away. The G3P that's taken out of the carbon cycle is used to make glucose and other macromolecules.